All right, now that you've heard that, let's get started on replicating it. So first thing you want to open up is an FL Keys. Just going to use some of the FL Studio plugins to you know save you a bit of time. Normally I would use Contact for this as they have a little bit more realistic piano in there. Regardless, what you want to do when you first open FL Keys is turn the hardness knob all the way down, turn the treble knob all the way down, and your sensitivity, put that back to 50%, or sorry, 0% right at the top here. Next thing you want to do is link that to a mixer channel, so make sure the screen bit's highlighted here. Open up the mixer, select any option, I'll go with number 10, go control and hit L, and it'll link that into the channel there. And what you want to do is just play any chord, so we can see that that's hitting about minus 12 decibels there, and we want to keep it under 18. This helps for mixing and no ducking with volumes, all right, so let's do that. Cool, so that's fine. Now let's make some chords for ourselves. So with Deep House, we want to make something that's kind of like, you know, give you know, right hit you right in the feels. So I'm going to start with my bass notes because bass notes is really important, especially with Deep House. So let's go right down to uh, here. Uh, how about E? Let's see. Let's go to E. Yep, that's good. So once you have your bass notes, let's go up um, an octave, so up a little higher, so we get some clean chords. Uh, for the first two, we'll start with minor, because minor's, minor tends to give a bit more of a dramatic effect, and it's less sort of happy feel to it, so you get this chord. So let's do two of those, because we've got the same. Um, let's go major for the second and minor th for the third. So major I see with three gaps between the, ba uh, the bass note, which is the middle note, and the top note, and then four between the lower note there to make a major, and just two, and the same four below for a minor. So let's play that. All right, don't forget that we're doing deep pass. So let's bring that BPM down. Let's go to 120. Um, and we'll add a little extra on the end, so let's grab the cutting tool, so right up here, click the slice tool, and we're just going to slice right on this last beat here, and we're actually going to change that to be the same as this selection of notes here. Alright, so all we have to do is just drag them down so that the bottom notes match, and just bring this one back up. What we want to avoid is that on this part, like that, last chord hits quite heavy, but so we want it to be a little softer, so find your velocity thing at the bottom, sometimes it might be hiding, so just drag it up, make sure that the controller is set to note velocity, and we're just going to bring this one down a little bit, so... up a little bit... there we go... Next thing we want to do is add an extra bass note for the piano, so let's just click, can hold down control, click, click, sorry, control shift, and then click each of the middle notes. Alright, control C, control V to paste them, and then drag that down to E3. And then we will get this. So it's quite dramatic, quite smooth. Next thing you want to do is close that FL keys just to save us a little bit of CPU usage. Right click on the next and insert a massive. Now this one is really good for deep house because oh, I feel like massive is the one that I can really pull out some of the best sounds from using you know their waves and things. In the pack that is below in the description you will find my presets for this tutorial, so we've got the deep bass one for this, which will be that's super loud. So again, make sure this is highlighted. Go to your mixer, Control L to link it in, and bring that volume down until we're at about we're just on 18. There we go. 
Okay, and we're going to exit those and go straight into our piano roll. So let's have a look. That's nice and low there. So let's do this pattern like so, following the same bass line. So we'll just copy and paste those again. I guess you hold down control and you can drag a box. All right. And then you can just go ahead and paste those in and drag them up to each of the parts. Oh, this one needs to go up. And then our final note is on the original one there. So then we get, just turn this one off by hitting the green. Now I can hear a little bit of clipping off the end there. So we're just going to push the release on our massive. You have that updated in your download anyway. All right, so let's go ahead and right click and clone this one. And the first thing we're going to do again is just go to our mixer and link it in the next channel and bring it down to the same area roughly. I want to go a little bit lower because I know what I'm going to do with the sound. So what I do now is just highlight the green box where this is in, control C, click on the green box, which this is next to, control V. Now we're going to turn off these two by clicking the two green buttons here. So this is the only one highlighted. Go into the piano roll. Pressing shift two or shift three or shift one will bring you to different instant zooms. So let's go shift two, that's the most comfortable. Now we're going to go control A to highlight everything. And we're just going to bring this up an octave to E4. So we get not high enough, an octave to E5. And now we're going to go seven notes up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, going into this again, we're going to bring down the cutoff. All right, and this EQ on the right, down even more. Go to the resonance, bring that right down. Actually, no, let's leave that up. I like that sound. Now let's go to our mixer channel, and we'll see what we're going with just above 18. So we're going to bring this down a bit more. All right. So now this is on a seventh, and we're playing this low bass together. Okay, I actually want to cut a little bit more highs, so make sure that you're highlighted on the seventh note channel so what you can do is right click on the channel you only want to hear in the pattern and vice versa yep and then right click again to unhighlight everything so let's go ahead and grab a pair of, actually no let's use a fruity free filter for this one this is a little cheeky way to eq um with a filter just a simple way with the free filter is quite nice especially if you're just doing an a top removal we go low pass and we put this which is the resonance all the way down uh, and then we just modulate with this here so let's just listen bring this down all right we can push a bit of resonance Check it again. Let's add some reverb on that seventh again. So that's the higher pitched one. So let's have that reverb up. Okay, follow me what I'm doing here. Low cut, we're going to go to about mm, 1000 hertz. You can see there everything up on the side here. High cut all the way up, damp all the way up, decay, 2.5 seconds, and the wet, we're gonna bring that level down to 30%. Stereo separation, let's go positive 40%, roughly. So, got that echo on there, together. 
make sure everything's re-highlighted and close the mixer tab. Now together with the piano. Alright, so what we're going to do here is we're going to paste these in the piano roll. Let's go and paste one, two, three, four of them. Now I'm going to go to pattern one here. We're just going to click on the edge and go make unique and open that up. So this is pattern two we have here, as you can see in the top part. And what we're going to do is just get rid of the piano in that one. Leave the pattern one in here and go back to our pattern one option and take the bases out. So control X, control X. Okay. So now if we have pattern two, we have the bases, which we'll put in here, and the piano can stay here. So this is what you should have now. Next thing to do is to zoom in on when we have both the patterns in here. And you can either press Control and zoom, uh, or you can just have your cursor in this area here and zoom in and out. On this part, I want to highlight just one beat on the bar. So just one beat, go back to the mixer channel, select FL keys, uh, yes let's do FL keys to start and we're going to add a fruity balance. Next thing you do is go to the volume option, right click, create automation. Close that, go to the next channel, add a fruity balance, right click, this time link to controller, okay so right click on the volume, link to controller, on the internal controller section, go to balance FL keys volume. And after you've done that, just click accept. Then close this and go to the next. Add a balance, right click volume, link to controller. Make sure that this is not highlighted, this should be off. Go to internal controller, balance. It should be red once you do so because it's using both channels to the same link. Click accept. Close that, close the mixer. Next thing you want to do is zoom up on this box here. And you can see this is the automation we've done, so as we've only highlighted this one section. So grab the first point, drag it all the way to zero, then grab the tension, which is the central part, and push it to, let's go to 50%. This is our side chain. A lot of people do use, um, you know, peak controller or gross beat, but this I feel has the best customization ability because you can just move it around and do whatever you like. So grab that and just paste that all the way through up until the last bar because we want to leave that open for the track to play. So this is our side chain, so let's play that. Without, you'll hear it and then you'll hear it come in. Oh, well, looks like I didn't turn back my base is back on. Oh, actually no. Have to remember that with these settings, if you have a zero position and it's always in front of the sound, it's never going to come through. So what I like to do is go control all, drag my complete track and entire bar forward, sorry, entire four bars forward, and just paste one of these automations at the start so that the volume stays up the entire way through. And then we're good to go. So without the side chain, with the side chain. Now if you don't like that sort of clipping sound that you can hear, what you want to do is zoom up all the way on your final point, right click here, press the Alt button, drag this end part all the way back so you've only got a small small window for it to come down. Make sure that you've got your tension on here so just right click the central part at the bottom and then go ahead and make sure that we've got it perfect. Alright and then drag this all the way to the other end here so we've got it nicely on. And what we've got is just the volume coming down you should remove that clip noise. Perfect. Okay. Next thing we want to do is add a kick. So let's go to a fresh pattern. So you can either go plus on here and add another pattern, 
or when you're on your pattern two, just click on this top bar, right click, uh, sorry, right arrow, and you'll get to pattern three. So let's go find a kick. Okay, dropping kick in here, and you can drop it here, or you can drop it next to it, it doesn't matter. Um, highlight that box, go to the mixer, and link to insert one, because I like to have my drums in the first nine spots, and then everything else after that. So that's good. the same for the kick, but we're going to have the kick come to 18 as well. And then we're going to be boosting from there. Alright. First thing you want to add is a parametric EQ2. This file will be in the download, so don't worry about that. Go and grab it. Let's boost some of the lows. So just keep hitting the beat button until you... comfortable so just copy roughly what I'm doing here all right and just with the tops take it a little bit off we're gonna right click and go type sorry order and then go steep six so we get a reasonable slope and we're gonna push the six down a little bit so without the EQ with the EQ all right next thing I'm gonna do is go to slot two um, if you have Camel Crusher, follow this step. If you don't, um, I would suggest going to get it. It's quite a handy plugin. So if not, you don't need to use this step and just ignore it. And we're going to add a subtle master onto this one here. Uh, the only difference is it gives a bit more push. So without, with, okay. And bring that volume right down until we're at about 12. With the kick, we want to be hitting about 12. So, all right. And let's just go into our piano roll here and add a four kicks. Actually, no, we will go to our pattern two. So just click on your pattern two, then go to the piano roll section in here. This is an extremely important step. Kicks need to be pitched in order to fit with the bass. Some kicks are more obvious than others. You get an awkward blend and it doesn't sound nice. So let's turn off our highs. And listen closely here. Oh, let's make sure we have our volume up. If you can't hear your volumes, it's likely because you aren't you aren't at the end. You aren't sort of you have to click somewhere where the volume is full on the automation before you go into your pattern. Otherwise, the volume will still be set to low. So let's go back in here. All right, let's add the kicks in. G minor works here for this bass. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So, highlight this on your green box, control copy, control X, re highlight this, go to our pattern three, and Make sure this is the only one highlighted and paste that in. Okay. Now go to our patterns, paste this in, paste this in. Just go to this last box and drag it back so that we've got the empty space there. All together now. My, pref my preference with these automations is to not have the down because it just saves a lot of time. So if you want to remove that, you can and just make sure it stays at 80% at the end part. So finishing off. Just dragging one of these playlists to make an extra bar just gives you a bit of empty space at the end for your listening to your mix. Next is to add in percussion. Now, if you want to save time, you can use a loop of some sort, um, but I would prefer to go and make my own. Um, but however, for this, I'm going to use a loop, and I'm going to look at my minimal loops because they seem to have the least effect on what goes on with the hats and things like that. So let's have a look, see what we can find. All right, now that I've found myself a loop, I've actually gone to the shaker loops for um, the house expansion. 
So what you do once you've, so we're set to 120 BPM, but this particular loop is a 128 BPM sample. So click on the sample and on the left corner, click that, click fit to tempo. And from there, you can either click the 128 estimated or type in BPM 128, enter. And that'll just fit it to 120. So you have to type in the original speed for it to link to what we have on the project. And we're just gonna paste these in. Now what we're going to do with these is the same thing, make sure we're highlighted, go to our mixer, I hats I like to do in my hat section and bring it down until it fits around just 18 to 21 rough area like that. So we hear that together. Just bear in mind when you play it in sample versus in the actual playlist, it will be different volumes. So let's bring it down, so we've got minus 18, and close the mixer, and let's try it with the kicks. And together. Now what I would add in from here would be some effects. So let me go and find some effects and I'll come right back. Alrighty, so I found one here. So what I'm gonna do is do the same thing that we do with everything else. We make sure it's highlighted and we link it in and lower that volume. So this one actually has a strange left right imbalance. So let's fix that up. So just keep watching the levels until they get even. Let's have a listen in the mix here. All right, what I want to do with this crash is go to the, the channel here and add in a parametric EQ2. And we're just going to take out a little bit more of the low end. So right click on the number one, order, steep eight, drag that across, listen to your sample, just tap it and bring it in. So you can hear that at this point, that's where most of the mid-range for that crash is in. So once we've got our point, let's grab the number two and bring that down a little bit. And then let's go to a number seven, right click, order, steep eight, drag that all the way to the bottom corner. So we're just cutting a little here. We've got a number six, and we're just gonna push that up a little bit, see what it sounds like. So without EQ, with EQ. All right. Let's close everything else that we've got working. So, together. Now I want a bit of reverb on that, so make sure you're back on that same channel. Slot two, go to Fruity Reverb two. Low cut, let's go the same as before we did once. 1000 hertz, high cut, let's actually go 10 kilohertz and damp five kilohertz. So we're seeing these values in the corner here. Stereo separation, 50%. Decay, we're going to push all the way up to 10 seconds and our whip we're going to bring down to 25. Let's have a listen. Let's bring our wet up to 40%. Wet up to 60%. Let's keep going with that word. Let's go 75. Bring this damp up to 8 kilohertz. There we go, that's nice. Now to create some quick effect before the drop, let's just take out this last part and let's have a listen. So we definitely need to add something in before that drop because it just doesn't sound quite right, see? Mm -hmm. 
All right, first thing we want to do, grab this crash, paste it below, click on the corner here, click Make Unique, double click, hit Reverse once you get this window come up. And what we're going to do is just drag this sample back. So we've got just part of it coming through. So let's zoom in a bit more. Let's do right about there. Grab our slice tool and we're just going to right click so we get that perfect cutoff right there. All right, next thing we're going to do is grab pattern two. We're going to paste that in here. And we're going to right click on the corner. Sorry, left click on the corner, make unique. Double click on that pattern so we're going to come up and we're just going to take those low bases out. Control X. Next thing we're going to do is go to our mixer, find our highs. And once we've got on that channel, we're going to add in a fruity filter again. Sorry, fruity free filter. I always get those mixed up. From here, we're going to bring the resonance down to just one, one bar. I'm going to go high pass. Actually, let's go low pass and let's boost this all the way up. Right click, create automation clip and make sure that's nothing is highlighted. So we get the whole thing lighting up. And from here, we're going to, let's just bring this all the way down to this point here. And let's just have a slope build up to see how that comes in. So that comes in quite fast. Let's create a nice 50% lift on that. It seems that not a lot happens after about 30% hmm, or so. Cool. So let's just do this. Let's just make sure this is on 50% and we've got a quick build here. All right, so all together, let's just deselect that. Right click, right click, escape. Let's play this. Now I agree that it has to come in earlier. Go back to our mixer, I want to push some more of that bass. So go to our deep house bass one and start pushing that volume up once the drop comes in. So it's about 15. Now I think what we want to do for this low bass, we're just going to right click so that's the only one playing. And let's go to the side here and add a stereo shaper. Now the whole point for stereo shaper is to give the, what I want to do is give the low end that feel that's right up on each side of your ears rather than in the center of your head. Top corner, my favorite preset for this would be stereoize three. So let's try that. Together with the highs and the piano. That's much nicer. All right, so make sure everything's highlighted again, close. And one final thing we're gonna add in for all of this would be an effects build for that pre-drop part. So in your download pack, you're gonna have this sample. I'm just gonna go and grab it from my own section real quick. I will be right back. All right, so we've got the sample here. This is actually a eight bar sample. So it's gonna go for quite a while. So let's go to our top corner. Once we've got this one clicked on, fit to tempo type in that 128 like we did with the previous sample so that'll make it extra long let's go ahead and link that to a channel as well I like to put my effects a bit further away from the others so I know what I'm doing and let's just check that volume let's start at the beginning let's bring that down
Facebook message was not part of that one. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's bring... Ooh, let's get an EQ on that because we want to take some of that low end out. So right click on one, order, steep eight, and... I'll bring it around to 300 kilohertz. Sorry, 300 hertz. Right click on seven, order, steep eight. Just cut that little bit off at the end there. Let's go to about 15,000 kilohertz. Sorry, 15,000 hertz here. Alrighty, let's have a little listen. Actually, let's add reverb first. Pretty reverb two on that same channel. Low cut up, high cut oh, at about 12,000 kilohertz. Damp, 12, oh, 12 kilohertz. Keep messing up my kilohertz and hertz. Let's give that 40% on wet and the stereo separation at 50%. And let's bring that decay up to about four seconds. Have a listen. Just for that last part. Yeah, it sounds quite good. What I want to do, this is quite a cool little trick, because at the end you can hear there's a bit of a sort of a click. Don't like that so much. So let's go and zoom right in. We're going to drag this back a quarter of a beat. So that's only the tiniest part, as you can see by the rest of the, the playlist. Double click on our sample, go to de-clicking, and click on smooth blending. Zoom in. You see that that cuts off here. So close that, press the Alt button, until you see, then you see these two arrows as you hover your cursor over, and just make that go like so. Nice and clean. All right, and make sure that that, yep, let's play that. I want to have everything else playing too. And the reverb, higher percentage, so we go 70% and we'll bring that decay up to 10 seconds. Close that, close that, let's have a listen. Final touch for me is always vocal chops, so let's get straight into that. And then we'll finish, be pretty much finished on this piece after that. So right click, insert, slice X. Now in the sample I will give you, it will be one of me singing. So um, I'm a mediocre singer, but I do know how to edit my vocals pretty well. So let's load that sample up. Actually I should have got it just drag and drop. From here, yeah. Okay, so once you get that, deselect the auto dump before you drop it in, and um, this will come up here. Now, the part that I would suggest to take from would be zoom in on basically right in the middle. Got this part here. You've got me blind. Take that. So you double click on one of the sections so that you just get a straight line like this and click add marker, which is this one right here. That would be marker one. Then click at the end of where that's where my vocal cuts there. Same thing again. Now you have it's this button here for add move marker region. And now you have this region. If you right click within this region, you'll get this. Just move that. Okay, pretty much perfect, so and get a couple cuts of other things as well. See what we have here. Oh, make sure you double click to go one line. The sky. 
eyes One step Two back One step So, make you find your regions Double click, double click To make your line, and lines it One, one, one Let's get that cut One I think I'm good with that. Alright, now let's close that. We'll leave the uh, modifications there. Let's go and drag that onto a new part of our playlist. Now let's figure out what we want to do with this. So let's go ahead and paste. Oh, my mistake. Let's go find a new new pattern. So just right click to get to, sorry, right arrow to get to a new, click on the top here, left arrows and right arrows will bring you through your pattern. So let's go in for pattern five. And I'm just going to paste that down here. Okay, from there, we're going to just listen to the piano only. So right click to highlight that channel. And this one, so together. All we're hearing is piano so far, so let's figure out what we want to do with this. Once you're in the piano roll for the slice X, the bottom you want to drag that up so you can get the control for velocity, and you want to change that to note fine pitch. So now if we put this one in, you want to find the right pitch for these notes, so let's play the piano. Let's paste that in after each other. See what we got. Alright. Okay. to cut that tiny bit off, so highlight them. Press Alt to find these and pull it back. So that sounds well off, so let's see what we can do with this part here. Make sure you haven't got anything selected. So let's have a listen. Sort of just like a game that you play until you figured it out, right? So, just want to get these a little bit off, I think. So let's just zoom up on that. Okay. Uh, you can hear the clicking on each of the notes there, so go back into Slice X, and what you want to look at is this section here. Push this button to activate it, and you can hear it immediately has an effect. So we're going to go all the way up this way. Cool. Now let's go to our mixer, to where we've got this linked in. And we want to add in a balance and link it to our previous so link to controller and balance if hockey's volume is what we're looking for and clicking accept next we want to do is add some delay to and with delay to follow what i'm doing here let's go volume we'll go to this first knob here we're going to go to the feedback and we're going to go to the same we're going to add cut so these numbers here for volume and feedback cut we're going to go all the way to this knob here and our offset is the next one we're going to go to 202.2 milliseconds to the right so you see that value up here as well so 202.2 or very similar so listen to that now let's add some reverb so, follow what I'm doing here, low cut, we're going to go a thousand hertz to start, I'm going to go high cut, 
going to go up all the way up to 12, damp all the way up to 12, wet all the way up to, let's go, actually let's go 50% because so we've got vocals, so decay, just two seconds, and then your stereo separation, let's go 40%. Let's go 2.5 seconds for the, for the reverb. Let's have a wee listen to see what that sounds like with the piano. Make sure we make two patterns in here. So let's add this side chain to have an idea of what we're going to sound like. Alright, let's have a listen to everything. Got our pattern 5 again, so just click on that, back into our channel. What we're missing is the velocity. So these notes are less have less volume and these notes have higher volume, so they sound louder for each of them. So press the control button and just click on that one section, and you can just highlight that one row. Next thing you want to do is press the shift button and making sure these are the only ones highlighted, that's key. Press the shift button and select the velocity you want to move it up to and drag all the way across. Make sure you're holding shift. Yep. Let's have a listen again. A little bit more. Now let's check with our... Yep, I think we're pretty good. Okay, what I want to add is a bit more EQ. See, so, sorry, EQ here. So let's go in. Parametric EQ2. This is on the vocals. And we're going to do the same as we've done with some other the other ones. Right click on number one, order, steep eight, drag that across. Find that point. Right there. Cut them lows out. Right click on seven, order, steep eight. Push that. Make it so it looks roughly like what I've got here. So with that EQ, with EQ. Next thing you want to do is go to slot 5, go Fruity Free Filter, then for the resonance, Q, down to 1 bar, right click, oh sorry, boost this, right click, create automation clip, close that, close that, close that. Alright, now we're going to paste this vocal in both of these, and we're going to do a little build for it, so let's post that in here. And we're going to go to about 80% on a 10% gradient and then we're going to go all the way up all right let's have a listen That's how you make some quick deep house. Um, as you can see, you can make nice vocal lead without having to be able to sing well at all. Um, you just need to do a little bit of pitch modulation and fixing up your pitches, as you could see from before. After that, it's endless of what you can do. So if you did learn something here, do like and subscribe. Uh, it helps me out a lot. And I've got some new tutorials coming out. I'm looking to do one soon on some more of the top 40 stuff like Jack U, DJ Snake, Major Laser, a bit of Marshmallow sort of thing. So that's what I'm going to lean towards for the next tutorial. So stick around for that. But I uh, hope you learned something here. And don't be afraid to apply it to any of the other genres as well. Peace out. Wow.